heading for Roswell, New Mexico. I'm going to find out the true story about what happened to those aliens that land here in 1947. I'm in Roswell, New Mexico, and guess what happened my first day? Can someone help me? I've got a flat tire. I'll help you. <laughs> Here's my newest, bestest friend, Robert. Robert's taking care of me today. I got a flat tire, but I'm going to be on the road in no time. Robert, thank you, my brother. Hey, it's me again, and I'm at the International UFOs Museum and Research Center. Follow me. The American Broadcasting Company and affiliated stations present headline edition with Taylor Grant. Today's edition presents a roundup of the latest developments in the finding of a flying disc. Late this afternoon, a bulletin from New Mexico suggested that the widely publicized mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. Army Air Force officers reported that one of these strange discs had been found and inspected sometime last week. A correspondent in Los Angeles and Chicago has been in contact with Army officials endeavoring to obtain all possible late information. Joe Wilson reports to us now from Chicago. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucer. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Rockwell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the discs which landed on a ranch outside Rockwell. The disc landed at a ranch at Corona, New Mexico, and the rancher turned it over to the Air Force. Rancher W.W. W. Brazil was the man who discovered the saucer. Colonel William Blanchard of the Rothwell Air Base refuses to give details of what the flying disc looks like. In Fort Worth, Texas, where the object was first sent, Brigadier General Roger Ramey says that it is being shipped by air to the AAF Research Center at Wright Field, Ohio. A few moments ago, I talked to officials at Wright Field, and they declared that they expect the so-called flying saucer to be delivered there, but that it hasn't arrived as yet. See, I got this alien thing figured out. They landed near Corona, New Mexico. Duh, COVID. Guess who brought it? The aliens. Wuhan aliens. <laughs> okay, Jerry, he's from Roswell, New Mexico. He's born in 1951 and lifelong resident there. Now, what can you tell me about the Roswell incident? Well, my uncle, Glenn Dennis, is, from what I understand, is the one that was called to go out and pick up the bodies. The bodies, there were bodies. Yes, of the aliens. And this is what he told me himself. Okay. Uh, he was dating a young lady who was a nurse. He wound up going out to the site. The military had called him. And these are the words that he told me. He okay. said he was on duty at that time. He wound up uh, being called to come out and pick up some bodies, uh, little babies in a sense is what he understood until he got out there. Okay. Okay, so I'm assuming they were more like a teenage kid, a little bit bigger. And uh, he picked them up, brought them back to St. Mary's Hospital where they were to be frozen. He said he, he found his lady friend and tried talking to her. And he told me, he said, uh, she was gone the very next day. They, he never knew, never found out where she went. Nobody would tell him. And uh, my grandfather, he told us about Glenn, how Glenn was all shook up and he was a little scared, a little nervous. He couldn't understand what was really happening because here he had found this entity or was called to come and pick up this entity that religion tells you isn't there. Sure. Uh, well, let me ask you this. The, your, your family member that saw the, uh, the alien bodies, were they uh, taken in and, and made to swear they would never tell anybody? Yeah. Well, Glenn told me he went back to this hangar and was trying to talk to some of the people in there. And he said, they made him sit down in a chair and he said, a sergeant came out with a 45 on his side. He said he pulled the 45 out, pointed it at his head and told him plain and simple, you don't say another word, you don't, this never happened, but you keep your mouth shut. And he told you this directly? Yes, sir, he did. Now, he didn't tell us for really quite some time. I was probably in my 40s when he told me that. 
He said, I went ahead and decided I was going to wind up telling the story before I died. Oh, uh, let me ask you this. If you were uh, offered the chance, would you ride up into space? Oh, yeah. If you were yeah. offered the chance to help colonate Mars, but the idea is that you don't get to come back, would you do that? No. Hell no. <laughs> no, that's those people are insane that want to do that. Yeah, you want to put your name in glory or whatever. You go ahead. <laughs> I tell you what, I thank you, my friend. I, I, I wish you the best. Godspeed and uh, peace out. OMG. Thank you. <laughs>